Good afternoon. Uh, someone called, I think, RCA244, um, wrote in and asked if I would uh, show and explain a little bit more about variable capacitors uh, for making crystal sets and things like that, uh, because I skated over it rather um, quickly in my videos. Um, and that's no problem, I've got a range here uh, on the bench which I'll show you and briefly uh, describe how they differ from each other. Okay, here's a group of variable capacitors. There's 11 of them all together, and they gradually get smaller. And we'll just pan across them. You see, they're getting smaller. And the last two or three are quite tiny. And then we'll have a quick look at each in turn. But first, we'll just look at the diagram, this circuit diagram here, of a capacitor. Uh, and it's a very accurate sort of diagram, because it's got two wires... Uh, metal wires of course and then there are two metal plates which are close together but don't touch and that's the essence uh, of the capacitor which we discussed in some detail in the first crystal set video um, and then if we move on here we have the symbol for a variable capacitor which the arrow is probably taken from the old, old type of knobs that had an arrow printed on them but it does indicate that we can change the capacitance of this one by adjusting the knob. And there's a third sort here, which we'll see some of presently, uh, which is a preset capacitor that's got not, not a pointy arrow head, but it's got a little flat bit on the end. And that means it's one, it's a preset. It means we adjust it with a screwdriver or whatever. And when we've got the right value, we leave it um, and only come back to it later if we need to adjust the capacitance anymore. That's a trimmer, a trimmer capacitor. OK, so let's get to business. Uh, this is the classic sort of um, old-time variable capacitor. As far as I know, they're not made anymore, so you have to uh, scavenge and um, rescue them from old 1940s radios. Um, or if you've got an amateur radio club in your district, uh, find it where they meet, go along, introduce yourself. And um, amateurs are usually very, very helpful people. They might uh, have some knocking around in a in a drawer somewhere uh, and essentially it's two metal plates rigidly uh, separated by uh, two metal rods um, and then there's a spindle of course to which are attached moving vanes which will come out as you rotate the knob and of course as the vanes the moving vanes come out from between the fixed vanes which remain on the bottom fixed then of course the capacitance is less and as you mesh them together um, the capacitance increases because um, there are more plates uh, close together than there were before so the capacitance is larger um, and uh, we'll just have another look at that in a minute and this one here is exactly the same but instead of having one gang it's got two gangs and I used a lot of these in my crystal set videos and someone wrote in and says why are there two sets of veins and I hadn't explained that and it's just the fact that this is a variable capacitor that's intended to tune two different circuits at the same time so it's got uh, one gang for each circuit that's why there are two and this is perhaps the most commonest of all uh, this is a single gang of capacitance about 500 picofarads, which is the sort of value you want for a crystal set. And this is the same thing with two gangs, each of 500 picofarads. Um, other than that, it's built in exactly the same way. Now, there is a convention that the moving vanes, which are in common with this uh, spindle, the shaft, um, they are connected to the frame of the capacitor. And by convention, it is that side, the moving vanes and the frame of the capacitor, which is connected to ground or, or the earthy end. We'll look at a diagram in a minute. So you say, well, what's to stop the fixed vanes underneath? What keeps them separate uh, when they're all mounted on this metal frame? And the answer is that you'll see here um, some little... I hope it's not gone out of focus. Let me get closer and focus which it is loath to do. I shall fade this to the next scene. 
yes here you'll see little standoffs one two three four and that's ceramic and the fixed veins are mounted onto these ceramic standoffs which means that they are insulated from the moving veins and the frame and there are contacts here and here to which you can make the wires and because whoever designed it or made it doesn't know which side you're going to connect to it also has contacts on this side and this side um, so that's useful because you can have your aerial going in that side uh, to the coil and then your crystal diode can be mounted on this other tag um, so that's quite handy here's uh, the same thing again this time it's much older uh, made of brass dates from the uh, late 1920s uh, or right through the 30s um, and you'll notice that it's actually got screw terminals on it because people uh, didn't tend to solder up their uh, radios in those days they often used wires and wrapped them around the terminals and screwed up the little nut um, it's got quite a nice um, slow motion drive built into it so that you can turn it round and have it opening quite slowly so that's, that's very good um, and uh, it's stamped on the back can you see here it says 0005 just there that's 500 picofarads so once again we've got that value 500 picofarads as being the ideal for a medium wave uh, or long wave uh, crystal radio uh, this is made by a firm called uh, Brands uh, they were quite expensive at the time but it's exactly the same thing I've only got these because I found a bunch of them at an amateur radio rally uh, for two pounds each and they were so old and quite nice I couldn't resist buying them here's another one more modern probably from the 1950s again it's got two gangs in it a spindle this one even came with some fixing screws um, and it um, this is two gangs each of 365 picofarads which probably work okay on a, on a crystal set and as you can see um, it, uh, it that was at another amateur radio rally and it was uh, just one pound and although I didn't really need it I, I thought well I'd better stockpile these things because they as I say they don't make them anymore uh, this is another one from the same rally the same store it looks like I think that game was a pound and uh, this one is a hundred picofarads so you'll see the plates are smaller much smaller and they go around all the way actually uh, and this wouldn't be any good for a crystal set because a hundred picofarads is not a large enough capacitor for us to tune in or tune out the station we want but it would be very useful for a short wave radio And here's one smaller still. You can see it's got a very small number of veins and they're quite far apart. So the capacitance of this would be quite low, uh, about 15 picofarads. And um, so that's, that's no good for a crystal set. But it might be good for a fine tuning uh, capacitor on a short wave set. And can you, I don't know whether you can see on the top there, it says AM, that's Air Ministry which means it's a government surplus part and in fact on the side it says uh, 10C2124 which is a Royal Air Force reference number for this particular small variable capacitor. One type of variable capacitor that is still readily available today is this, uh, this pattern um, which is used in the little pocket transistor radios and you can still get these uh, new, they're quite cheap, or 60 or 80 pence each. Uh, they're slightly more fiddly because you've got to find a knob that will fit them. And there's one or two different types that have different values of capacitance. And the ones in this are fairly low. I think they're about 140 puff. So i um, not sure whether that would be any good in a crystal set. We may have to try it out. But these are still available. Now we come down to the small ones which are uh, presets, something you adjust and leave um, in case you need to adjust it again and these are not large enough in capacitance really for use as uh, crystal sets but we're just pursuing variable capacitors down to their smaller end and this is a Philips so-called beehive trimmer and um, 
and believe that I mean it doesn't look as though it has but it has interlocking plates if I unscrew it and pull off the top of the beehive and it stays in focus you can see I hope that there are um, concentric um, well concentrics which intermesh and therefore will uh, increase and decrease the amount of uh, that the plates are in contact so it is a variable capacitor though it doesn't look like any of the others and pursuing it on you can have tiny capacitors which are air spaced exactly like the ones we've seen before and I don't know whether this is in focus or not but it's a tiny let me see if I can just get it in focus it's a tiny air spaced preset capacitor lovely little bit of work no it's not in focus I'll scan it Um, now, this is this is still currently available. These are available um, to a value of I think 90 or 100 picofarads, which is not really large enough for a crystal set. You adjust it with a screwdriver or a non-metallic blade, say a brass, uh, or, or preferably non-metallic at all, the, the sort of stiff plastic uh, trimming tool, which you can adjust it. And it does have. Um, plates in it, fixed and moving plates, the same as the larger versions. And last of all is the the sort that is simply a screw and two or more little brass plates interleaved with thin mica and you just, when you screw the screw up it pushes them together or allows them to separate and that is also of course a variable capacitor. BBC News at 9 o'clock. George Osborne has delivered his eighth budget, warning that storm clouds are once again gathering over the global economy. Revised figures show worsening economic growth, debt and productivity. But the Chancellor stressed that Britain was well ahead of other major economies. He announced cuts in corporation tax and capital gains tax, and a rise in the threshold for the higher tax rate. But the Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Seema Malhotra, says the budget failed to address many important issues.